This is a computerized Senate game. Begin by selecting a plain piece style. Click on the picture of the style. Then click on the style of the opponent's plain piece. Each player will use five of these pawns. Next, roll down the list box to type over my name with your game name. Then press enter to save this. You can choose to play against one of the pharaohs or just let the computer select one randomly. At this time the player can choose to read the rules, but I'll go over the rules as we play the game. To the left are a number of checkboxes that allow a variety of optional rules to be employed. Since there are no known rules for the game, these represent the ideas of people for ways to play. These are some of the best and most playable ideas. There are two main setup systems for starting gameplay. These are known from Egyptian wall illustrations in tombs. The standard setup consists of all five players' pawns on one side of the top row and all five of the opponent's pawns on the other side. In the standard system, the first space a player can move to is the far right space of the second row. The pawns must then move to the left until the end of the row and then move to the bottom row where movement will be to the right. The first player to exit all five of their pawns off the end of the board is the winner. Instead of rolling dice, the players would throw four colored sticks, white on one side, dark on the other. If the white side of the stick was up, that was a space the pawn could move. The total number of white sides up stick thrown was the movement. If no white sides are showing, that meant the pawn could move five spaces. Players got to throw and move again if the total was one, four, or five. When there is a valid move a pawn of the human player can make, the pawn will be outlined by a colored box. A red dot will indicate where on the board the pawn can move to. Only one pawn is allowed to occupy a space or house at a time. If a pawn lands on the pawn of a different player, it will capture it and send it away. In the standard system, this means that it will send the captured pawn back to its home row. That is, unless the pawn is protected. If the pawn is adjacent to another pawn of the same player, it is protected. If the pawn is on the house of happiness or the house of rebirth, it is also protected. If a pawn lands on the House of Waters, it is sent to the House of Rebirth. If that house is occupied, it must go to the first empty house closer to start from there. If there are no empty houses, the pawn is sent home. And the player loses his bonus move. If it wasn't obvious, protected pawns cannot be captured. The last three houses are special. Pawns that are captured on these houses are not sent home, but they are replaced by the capturing pawns like in checkbox 2. From the gameplay, it can be seen that pawn block walls of two or three pawns limit the opponent's ability to move. After a while, when your pawns have left the board, it becomes harder and harder to form blocks.
At the end of the game, a score page is shown. This shows the points each player has accrued. The most points are scored for the fastest times it takes to exit the board. Any points less the number of turns it takes to exit the board scores those points for the player. Other points are scored or lost for landing on special houses or capturing opponent pawns. A high score is saved to compare to other games. 50 points are awarded to the winner. Other two illustrations show the pawns of the players set up alternating with each other on the top row. To use this system, select the first checkbox option. The second checkbox option is automatically selected as it cannot be played in any other manner. In this system, the pawns must move to the right along the first row, then move to the left on the middle row. Finally, move to the right on the bottom row. Under this option, pawns that are captured are replaced by the capturing pawn and sent back to the space of the capturing pawn.
As can be seen in this game, winning is often a case of luck. Taking a look at the odds of throwing numbers with sticks produces these graphs. I programmatically threw the sticks a million times for each test using the game's random generator and got these results when throwing four and five sticks.